about 6.40. I've just finished my first Zoom call for the day. Uh, time zones are always interesting because <laughs> it's like someone's about to go to bed. You just like all messed up because you just woke up, have a coffee. So, but it's fun. It's been great catching up with people over the last few days from around the world. <laughs> interesting one, hey? So yesterday, I popped to the shop quickly. I just needed to get one or two things, just a garage, little convenience store thing up the road. And this whole, this whole COVID thing, hey, I wonder how much it has fucked us up. <laughs> because, like right now, I think I'm probably in the best space I've been since this whole thing started. Since someone ate a fucking bat sandwich or whatever the hell happened. But <clears throat> I remember when the first lockdown, when our president announced and the world announced that it's closing down and you've got to stay at home and all of this, I was a mind fuck, hey. What the hell? And I went dark. A lot of us did. Wasn't nice. Discussion for another time. But, so, having gone to Iceland recently and having been out in the bush a little bit, it's almost like, and Iceland for me was a big one, hey? It was almost like there's this pressure that builds inside. With all of this, you can't go out, you can't see, you can't do this, be careful of this, wash your hands, wear a mask, don't cough. And there's tension inside. And it, and, and, and Iceland for me was almost like a, it was an exhale. And a little, not a lot of the pressure got released. And I remember, I was just saying to Joni now, having a chat, and I remember sitting at this one little um, like restaurant in Reykjavik. For those of you that followed along, it was the day I went to the penis museum, different discussion, but we sat outside and we had a bottle of wine and some drinks and this, and I've said that Reykjavik is kind of like a, it's like a, it's like a Arctic, little Arctic town combined with Renaissance Europe vibe. Love it. Absolutely great. But we were sitting outside on this restaurant and it's packed. It's just people everywhere. At the time, Iceland only had five active cases, all which were under control. And they, look, they run the system well. But anyway, we were sitting outside at this restaurant. And, and I, I looked around and it was just people. It was normal. There was music playing. We had drinks. I had amazing food. People were having fun. There's people walking past with their dogs. There's blue sky, green trees. And for a second there, I thought, this is real life. This is normal. But then in an instant, your brain says, no, 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 fuck you, Jerry. Come back to reality. you got to go home and then go back to this lockdown thing. So that was, <clears throat> sorry, frog in the throat, they say. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a funny reality. Hey, anyway, so um, not this past Sunday, the previous Sunday, Uncle Cyril, our president, announced one more time that we'll be going back to a level four lockdown. So what that is, is basically stay at your home, you can't go to work. You can only go out for essential things like for food and for medicine. There's a boob ban on alcohol again. And funny, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast yesterday, and he was talking to Dave Chappelle. I don't know if this is legit, but they were talking about how when the world stopped, that only how how fucked up it is to be told your business is not essential so you have to close down fuck you up a bit but worldwide and for some reason like the podcast industry in america they were seen as essential and i can understand why it's that mental thing it's the release and whatever but apparently liquor sales there was also essential am i right that's what they said on the podcast is that the sale of liquor became an essential business because people can drown their sorrows and get all shit-faced. I don't know. But um, here yeah, with us, anyway, so lockdown four is, <clears throat> it's, so stay at home, only essential stuff can go out for, no alcohol sales, anybody who wants to can, but I understand why they're doing it. But hey, so anyway, so there's the ban on alcohol sales, and you're staying at home, and I get it. <clears throat> anyway, going back. So when he did this, when Cyril closed us again, 
and he's, he blocked provincial travel into and out of Gauteng, which is where Johannesburg is, the province. Immediately, your mind wants to slide back to that fucked up time, which was the first seven weeks when the world literally stood still. But I'm saying this to Jody now. I'm actually in a pretty decent space, headspace, because when this came along, I was like, okay, cool. There's a lot of stuff I want to do, haven't gotten time for. And for me, this is, I think, the best headspace I've been in since this whole thing started, right? Look, there's a lot of shit going on, but fuck what. You can complain about it, be a little little princess, or just harden up, cupcake, and deal with it. So I've decided that, and I've had a lot of fun producing podcasts, tutorials, chatting to people and stuff, having my own little space at home. But I re- it really has. The last week and a half has been amazing. And I, we're expecting him, I think he's talking again on Sunday, to tell us, okay, you guys can chill a little bit, or we're doing this for longer. I think he's going to make us do it for longer. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the whole of July. Anyway, but then yesterday, let me circle back, long loop. I went to this convenience store yesterday quickly, just needed a few things for home. It's a store at a garage, a little place. And <clears throat> I walk in, and it's the thing, you stop your car, you get out. And as you get out, now it's automatic. You put your mask on. We still have to wear masks. I know you US guys, you don't have to. Uh, we still have to. It's a, it's a it's a criminal offense to not wear a mask. So anyway, put my mask on. I'll wear masks. Off we go. Walk in, do the hand sanitizer thing, and then I walk in. I grab what I needed, two or three things. Go and stand in the queue. There's only one lady in the store ahead of me, and there's the circles on the floor that says "Don't stand closer than this." So I do that, and um, and then suddenly I'm like, "Fuck! Am I too close?" And then that that instant. Fuck it, what's it? COVID paranoia kicks in. Fuck, am I too close to her? Then my mind says, but who touched this bottle of milk before you did? And now if I get to the front and I, I ask, can I tap my card? I don't want to insert it because do I then tap it on the machine or do I just hover it close enough so it doesn't touch it and spread the germs? That's where you might, you, you, you go down this fucking quick little spiral. Messes with you. That's tough, eh? And then walk out, and as you walk out the shop, then someone else walks in, and you kind of do the little number that you don't like get close to each other. <laughs> someone said a while ago, if this was a zombie apocalypse and everybody that had COVID turned into a zombie, this would be much easier because you would know who to stay away from. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so hopefully, going to go and get my second vaccine today. I'm going to drive through there. I've got the first via Pfizer, so I'll get the second one. And I'm for sure going to post it on my feed so the anti-vaxxers can bring their best. Fuck them. Uh, I just, I think I'll feel better when I have it. I, sh- I have to do it. I mean, isn't that a responsibility? <clears throat> I think it is. Friends, family. I've got very flo- close family members now who have COVID. So I need to do it for me to travel. I, I, I respect my guests enough to do that. I would have done it either way, but... Yeah, that's it. Hey, so mindset's been an interesting thing. It really has. Um, sleeping well. Which is a different. I also think the sleeping well thing is is a, is a mindset change because you're not as look. Anxiety is there. It's always like fucking under the surface, right? But <clears throat> it's not there the whole day all the time, which makes it a little bit easier. It really does. Um, I think I mentioned this in the previous video. I was speaking to a therapist a couple of weeks ago, and he once again said that this whole curve, ooh, shadow play, <laughs> wait, Wolverine, where's my three, Wolverine, no, <laughs> sorry, squirrel, um, that the amount of shit people can deal with, emotional stress, mental health, all of that stuff, if you manage it as like a cup, fuck, it's chipped, as a cup, <laughs> Um, normally this cup represents the amount of emotional stress and trauma and pressure you can take before you blow your shit. So if you fill this thing up all the way, so you're chill, someone bumps into you in traffic, your boss gives you a hard time and, 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 and you can tolerate, but when you get to the top and it starts spilling over, you lose your shit. The problem with COVID now is this whole mental health situation that the world is in has filled all of our cups half already. 
So the amount of shit you could normally deal with, you can't anymore because you reach breaking point so much sooner. <coughs> Excuse me, COVID. And to me, like the Iceland trip almost took the cup that I had and it emptied it a little bit. So now I was here. So that experience of going out to being normal, that released a bit of that pressure for me. Last weekend, Saturday morning, I got in my car, I took my drone and my camera, and I just drove out to an area called Hackpoort, which is in Hateng. Early morning, it was cold as balls. It was like minus one. And I just put the drone up and took some shots. And again, that just released that pressure a little bit. So it's been interesting. But, um, oh. but, <laughs> I bought this on the ship many, many moons ago. Mm. Sucks, COVID does. <laughs> okay, apologize for that. That was bad. Um, but yeah, those little things that release the pressure, I think also helps with the mindset. So if you're still watching, thanks for listening to my COVID ramblings. I just, it's, I see different people both on calls and in real life. And even on emails, and you can see these people are hanging on a fucking string. Hey? There must be a way to release it. And I think it's important each of us finds that. For me, training is a big deal. Uh, but what I've also done is, like my fitness pal, you can track your calories. And it's, you can scan barcodes. It gives you the breakdown of your calories. Now, I don't actually care deep down what I look like. I'm comfortable with what I look like. But that focus on the game of, oh, I came in 300 today under my recommended calorie. So I'm in a deficit, which means I'm helping that. So it's those little things that releases the pressure all the time. Training does. Going to get my vaccine does. Going this weekend, driving somewhere, putting my drone up and just zoning. That does. Uh, conversations with nice people. That does. Yeah. And now I hear, what's it? The Delta variant is the big talk right now. But now apparently there's talk of a new variant out of Peru. I'm trying to think. Uh, was it Omega or fuck? There's some, I don't know. I just don't think this thing's going to go away, literally, ever. <clears throat> I don't. I think in the long term, and look, I'm, I'm not medical, so, but I think in the long run, it's just going to become part of our life. I spoke to Brendan yesterday, a good mate of mine from, he's in LA now, but it's also like, at what stage are people going to get to a point and say, just fuck this, you know what, life cannot keep going like this, jobs, relationships work, stress, businesses, I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but maybe it's going to be like the common flu down the line, where you get vaccinated once a year, and we just carry on with our life, I don't know, I don't know, <clears throat> see what happens then, and this is the thing, I, you, us, we, can either sit down, and be so sorry for ourselves, and spiral down in this deep, dark hole of despair and misery, or we can actually start looking for those little bits of good and literally make an effort to move on. I know it's fucking hard, trust me. One day down the line, maybe I'll tell you, but last year it was close, it was not nice. It's very difficult to get out of that. So I can sympathize with all of you, and empathy for all of you who feel that, I know. <laughs> Seen that rodeo before? But, like I said, now it's, it's probably the best headspace I've been in since this whole thing started. And it's pretty cool. Yes, I've taken, I've taken steps to talk about it and to say things that bother me and to make changes personally. It's a big deal. It really is a fucking big deal. So it's just to find that thing for each of us, for each of you, that is it. Now, I'm trying to sound like fucking, I don't know, South Alp, stop that shit immediately. Anyway, let's get back. Um, you yeah, are, I've got nothing else. I'm just waffling on here. So let's do a question for the day. <clears throat> Either what have you done during the last year and a half to release the pressure that COVID has put on us all mentally and physically? And if you've been struggling up until now, what are you planning to do? Or what do you think you can do to release the pressure? that COVID has put on us mentally and physically. I'm really keen to hear. If you don't want to put in a comment, send me a direct message. But I think it's good to share these things. It gives us a little bit of hope. Now I sound like I'm from, what's that movie? 
come on, man. I forgot this last time as well. Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins, Prison, Hope. It's all about hope. Anyway, see, I need more coffee. Got up early this morning, late night. So, yeah, question for the day. What did you do to release the pressure that COVID put on us? And if not, what are you planning? What do you think you can do to release that pressure? For me, travel, alone time, creativity, and exercise. Simple as that. <clears throat> so, I'm going to have another coffee. It's actually quite dramatic, huh? And um, then I'm going to shower, get some work done, and then try and go for my second uh, vaccine. And then the day starts. So, let me know the question. I'd love to hear your answer on that one. For now, though, time to get going. Mm. Good day, you must have. Fuck, it's bad. I'm going. Bye.